right, welcome to the third review of the evening. Up this time is Biomutant. Um, so, Biomutant. Um, now, unlike probably most of the games we cover here, you probably heard of this one. <laughs> like, well, Biomutant, if nothing else... Yeah, this this like, game looks like it has at least two A's, possibly three. Let's no, it's not a triple A game. Two? Like it, one to two, I'd say. Like, Still, it has A's. Yeah, I mean, but, well, that's kind of one of the things that the that's been in the marketing materials for Biomutant here. It's a you know higher scale game. You know, they called it a triple A game. It's it's really not like this. You know. Especially since, um, uh, from what I gather, this is some classic uh, pile of Eurojank. <laughs> like, um, maybe not as bad as, say, Necromunda, hired gun that came out, but still. Um, and that's probably owing to the fact that, well, I hesitate to use the word fact, because once again, the marketing materials have been touting that this is a um, high-end game built by 20 people. Um, that's not exactly true. Um, and, you, you know, you see this phenomenon even on, you know, um, the smaller indie devs that we have in our program. But it's like 20 devs at the main Experiment 101 studio and a host of contractors. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's like how... You know, this team is only three or 17 or whatever amount of people. But, oh, yeah, you, you had uh, part timers and, you know, some people specifically to work on this game as well. You know, it's not telling the entire story. And that's definitely the case with Biomutant here. It's um, but be that as it may, it's still a small, you know, it's still a small team for high you know something this high end or having aspirations for the high end um and yeah this game uh, the reviews for the biomutant have been all over the place um but i think they've settled more into the negative as time has gone on um and yeah the, um, our particular copy was given to Pettyfan in order to test out his new system, and it does seem, it, you know, his new computer has limitations. Yeah, it's more, I'm still using the old graphics card. Right. Um, and heaven knows when that's going to get upgraded. <laughs> uh... I mean, yeah, yeah, the Bitcoin um, crash is happening, and NFTs have dried up super fucking quickly. But that doesn't mean supply is going to be magically replenished like that. Especially with the drought happening in Hong Kong. Yeah. So, still going to be a bit of time before Petty could um, be able to stream and broadcast a game of this caliber. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so, with that in mind, what are your takeaways from Biomutant here? Um, it's all right. The combat's very much, you know, you have a melee weapon, a ranged weapon, and you can have almost kind of like um, Bioshock-esque plasmids. And you're basically plopped in a open world of the post-apocalypse after um, terrible chemical spills that the humans left made um the planet nearly uninhabitable for us and very radioactive i'm if i believe correctly so humans left and the um mammals that were left you know the small mammals like foxes raccoons so on and so forth all end up basically mutating in to where they're mostly bipedal, you know, have, like, almost human-esque qualities. And they're just kind of... It's okay, Petty, you can say furry. 
Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, but. And um, they're um, you're I guess a nameless wanderer. A, a lot of people call you the Ronin or whatever. And basically, you're just kind of trying to kill the um, I guess quote unquote antagonists called the World Eaters. Because they're trying to destroy the Tree of Life, which, if that gets destroyed, um, bad things are more than likely going to happen. And there are also several different factions you can join of, like, warring tribes. Some of them want to protect the Tree of Life. Some of them want to watch it burn. So... It's definitely one of those, you know... Potentially destroying the tree of life isn't, you know, exactly a game over, but it could be. And there is a vast amount of crafting. Um, I think all the weapons can be used to, like, switch out parts and stuff. So... That's kind of cool, though, as with many games like this, there is kind of like a quote-unquote meta where there are some parts that are objectively better than others. And... Um, yeah. Uh, any questions... How much side questing did you do? <laughs> <laughs> the entire, like, first fourth of the game I did, most of it was side questing. Mm. Yeah, that's something that uh, was in a lot of reviews. The main path isn't that long. Um, yeah, it's side quests that are, are uh, like the bulk of this game. Mm -hmm. If you... Honestly, you could probably get through the game if you could, you know, sneak your way around hard encounters. You could probably get through the story in, like, three or four hours. Mm. Sounds about right. So, yeah, most of your meat is just, you know, side quests, grinding for better gear. Mm -hmm. You know, messing with the crafting, so on and so forth. And um, how is the open world? Um, it was okay. Um, there are supposed to be these, like, animals that you can ride, but my game glitched, and I wasn't able to finish the quest to unlock them, so I was just kind of hoofing it. I mean, what's the politics of riding animals when you also are animals? Um, they aren't sentient animals, question mark? <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the best I can come up with, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as far as the open world itself, how big is it and how populated with things are there? It's pretty sparse. Granted, mm. one would expect this, you know, in a post-apocalypse. Yeah. True. Um, it's fairly large from, you know, the five hours I put into it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's one of the distinction. you know, it's the distinction between a good open world and a bad open world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because not that long ago, um, these games really, really tried to sell us on size. You know, look at how big, like literally big this world is. But it turns out, if you don't have interesting shit in that world... Yeah, if you don't put... Like, Breath of the Wild is about the minimum amount of... Or the maximum amount of size you can get for the amount of interesting stuff in it. <laughs> right. Because there's always, like, Korok seed puzzles and shit. Uh, a lot of games don't have tiny stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you get lost very quickly in terms mm -hmm. of... It's just how long it takes to get between landmarks where shit happens. Yeah, yeah I so will these, say the um, map is not great in this game. 
Though these days the the complaints are more towards, you know, the Ubisoft sandbox, mm-hmm. you know, um, which is a different thing because Ubisoft games. Oh, there's certainly a lot of shit to do. It's almost all busy work and the same fucking busy work over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not just in like one Ubisoft game. It's like Ubisoft kind of prides itself on, you know, reusing its formula again and again. Like there's a reason why people have grown to hate fucking towers <laughs> in their world games. Yeah, luckily there aren't any like, you know, climb up the towers to unlock the map in this game. There are little signposts that can unlock fast travel locations. And that's about the worst part of it. Yeah. Another thing to address is the dialogue. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't think you covered this, but it really has to be covered. Because um, for uh, reasons of the apocalypse, I guess, they decided to cover this in the style of, say, a David Attenborough documentary. <laughs> uh, that, is, that is to say, um, these creatures can speak. You can't understand them without a narrator. Yeah. And God, <laughs> is he annoying. Oh. And, and just imagine, every fucking conversation in the game is like this. Yeah. And also, he chimes in when you're not having conversations. Well, he's, he's a like, narrator. Yeah, he's like fucking Navi. Mm. I guess that's one way to point out stuff to the character, di- quote unquote, diegetically, but. Or to the player, diegetically, I should say. Maybe. But luckily, I don't know if this is. Also, up- diegetic is doing a lot of work, doing a lot of work there. Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, though you can at least turn off, turn down the um, frequency of the narrator. I don't know if that was since launch or if that was an added feature. <laughs> but uh, sadly, it doesn't work in um, um, dialogue interactions with other characters. Which, honestly, I would have been fine with just, you know, the blabber and just subtitles, like, you know, just about every JRPG on the planet. <laughs> mm. And so the narrator just narrates both sides of the conversation? Yes. Hey. <laughs> My yeah. thoughts exactly. It just seems like that would get old super fast. Yeah, I found yeah. myself just speeding through dialogue things, not really caring what they had to say. Because <laughs> it was that bad. Yeah. Once again, this has um, been in the litany of complaints. Mm-hmm. There is yeah. also a binary morality system. So oh, that's, boy. That's giving me stable flashbacks, and I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've heard about this as well. The thing is, the you know, the okay, the specifics are you know whether to kill or spare certain um, boss creatures. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like never mind their minions. You can kill them willy nilly and um, not suffer any morality effects. It's just you know, the the people at the end of the level or um, whatever. That you have to spare. I slaughtered 80 dudes to get up here. What's one more, right? (laughs) I mean, how it should work? And believe me, there there have been games that do this. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like uh, Dishonored comes immediately to mind, Mm -hmm. which is one uh, one of the complaints that some people had. It's like, in order to get the best ending, you had to not kill people. Um, yeah, I don't anyway. think there are non-lethal slash sneaking options in this game. Yeah. And uh, on that note, how is the combat? Because there's been a lot of complaints about uh, the combat as well. It depends what weapons you get. Like, I ended up falling back on this um, rocket fist weapon and a um, assault rifle for my 
um, I guess, weapons of choice. Yeah, I've heard a lot of the sword play or melee combat was really weightless. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like I said, you know, there's a, you know, there's been a lot of um, back and forth on this title already. Yeah. Uh, like, it's not bad, but yeah, they could definitely use some more weight. It almost feels like MMO combat, honestly. Hmm. Like, maybe more of an action MMO. Yeah, yeah you could see that. Um, and you, de- you detail the bug before, but okay, so how much jank did you encounter? Um, there were um, some issues, like um, there's this one area where, um, if you stay in it too long, it'll kill you, but you can still kind of cross it to progress. Well, it wasn't letting me go through the doorway to, um, progress, so I was basically trapped there until I did, until I reloaded the game a couple times, actually. So, that's one of the bugs that sorted itself out, but it's still there. Yeah. I think, uh, like, they had a day one patch, um, and, or a, a another, I, I'm trying to think if the, another patch is coming. I, I think there is, because, well, once again, th- this game has a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, but, once again, uh, not a surprise given the scope of the title, the, um, the size of the team, and also the amount of time, you know, like... This is a good time for me to flay one of those um, aphorical quotes. The whole, you know, a good game, you know, a game delayed can be good, but, you know, a bad game will always be a bad game or however it goes. Um, The point is, no. I mean, that was true until they started being able to do massive uh, patches and shit. And also, a, you know, a game that has been delayed for, uh, that's been in development for four or five years. Um, is actually going to have some problems because yeah, this I is... guess it's hard to make something good once you're dealing with multiple uh, engine changes and stuff that gets much more likely over time. Cross generational jank as well. Yeah, um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. especially um, we're talking, you know, the difference between like maybe a 16-bit platformer and you know a big ass open world game. Mm-hmm. You know. Because this game was in development for like four or five years. Um, in fact, it's kind of renowned for having a very lengthy development time. Um, and what I'm saying is, yeah, that's absolutely been captured in this game. Um, it's got the pockmarks of troubled development. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and how much patching is going to fix that is up in the air but on that note you, you it's perhaps safe to say that Biomutant will get a sequel since um, apparently the game did incredibly well or at least incredibly well at launch <laughs> so it's tapered off significantly since then yeah I found it to be alright I kind of wish I you know, I might see about going back to it when I have a better graphics card, because that was my mm-hmm. major limitation. I didn't have enough um, video RAM in the card I have now to really have any sort of, you know, draw distance or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so to add the final elements here, okay, uh, any comments on the music or the sound? Uh the sound, the sound design was all right, but the music was just kind of there. Mm. Like I don't, I couldn't really tell if it was going for specific style or what have you. Mm-hmm. And pricing. So this is a big one. This is um, probably the biggest flashpoint of contention uh, surrounding Fire Mutant because guess the price. Well, I can see you in front of me, so Golux and Twilight have fun with that. Uh, 50 bucks? Nope. 60 bucks? 60. We have a winner. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's, um, 
Mm. That's been the biggest source of frustration because um, THQ Nordic has released a full price game, which is actually fairly unusual for them because they tend to put out games that cost, say, 20 to $40. But in fairness, this isn't a remake or a remastering or anything like that of an old game. This is a brand new game from a brand new franchise. So, um, you know, them charging $60 on that alone isn't necessarily the problem. The problem is, well, once again, it's got the, you know, it's got the um, Eurojank in it. And, you know, a lot of people have expressed either regret or not interest in buying this game at 60 But... On the other hand, people got strangely hyped for this because, oh, and that's another thing that I, I don't think um, you could get it into too um, much there because of your uh, graphics card. But another problem people have been having is the um, performance mm-hmm. of, especially on consoles. Um, oh, yeah, I can imagine this on like PS4 and Xbox One. Well, it's also um, people are mad that um, the place, you know, the quote unquote PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions are, well, they're upscales. They're not native. Um, and that's due to the fact that this, once again, this game has been development in five ye- for five years. Um, they didn't have the fucking time or resources to do proper next gen versions of this game. Mm-hmm. Now, um, and I like, and I don't think they plan on doing that. May, like, that's probably the like, if you're getting a full on, you know, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, because th- this game is getting a next, you know, those systems enhancements, but it's not going to be 4K at 60 frames per second. Oh, no, 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 no. The devs have actually been fairly clear about that. Um, you know, once again, this is kind of this is one of the downsides of having a small team um, do a large game. Now, you know, I know that people like to um, put a very sunny face on these kinds of uh, development stories, but it's not all sunshine and roses because when you have a small team. That means you have, you know, limited resources. Now, granted, that doesn't preclude others from developing that, but once again, that's more time and resources, and maybe those are going to be funneled towards a sequel. You know, I, I don't know what the roadmap is or the plan, because, um, when, you know, the publisher hasn't spoken about that. Uh, at least not yet. I think they're waiting to see how the next major patch goes um, before deciding the next course. Cool. Um, and yeah, the uh, the next ma- and that and the next patch is supposed to come out on Monday, if I'm uh, time of recording, if I'm reading this right. Or no, no, it was last week. Sorry, stupid European dating. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that's... Yeah, that's why that wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, um... So... Yeah, games can improve, but the, there's also only so much a pa- you know patching can do. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm not sure if there's anything that can f- fix the weightless combat. Yeah. Well, we can see. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Petty, would you recommend this game at its full price? At its full price, probably not. This is especially one of those ones on the list of wait for a sale. <laughs> Thank you, Carrick. Yeah. But that sounds about right. No. And anything else on Biomutant here? Uh, not really. Alright, so that'll do it for, well, this game. 
Uh, be sure to tune in after the break as Twilight will have impressions of Hot Legs. 